under this towel, I have a device that plays a bunch of PlayStation 1 games, way more than the 20 included in the PlayStation Classic. I've got something better than the PlayStation Classic. This device, this device right here is what you should be spending your money on if you want to play the, the PlayStation 1 games that you like. What is it? What could it be? <sighs> oh. The PlayStation Classic. You've probably seen tons of videos on this already, but this device that Sony released on December 3rd, 2018, just 13 days ago, for $99.99 MSRP with 20. PlayStation 1 games has now been slashed in price. You can now get it for $75. That's $25 off, 25% off, $81.65 with tax. Just 13 days after this was supposed to take over Christmas time shopping. It was a huge disappointment, a huge failure. According to PlayStationLifestyle.net, the PlayStation Classic sold just under a third of what the SNES Classic sold in just four days. In one whole week, the PlayStation Classic sold 120,000. In its first four days, the SNES Classic sold 369,000. So you can bet that those sales will immediately drop off. Uh, this was only in Japan, but I can imagine in the United States, the sales are just as poor in comparison to the other classic consoles. Now, this is a cheap piece of crap. So Sony might still be making a decent profit on this, but it's not exactly the cash grab that they imagined. So let's take a look at why this is a failed classic console. So let's take a look at the 20 games included with the PlayStation Classic. Mind you, I could have guessed, I did assume that the PlayStation Classic would be a, uh, you know, to say the least, a, a product I would not be satisfied in. When they announced the first five games, I already knew that this was going to be a dumpster fire. They announced Final Fantasy VII, Wild Arms, Tekken 3, Jumping Flash, and Ridge Racer Type 4. So the only, there's only two that really jump out as must-have PlayStation classics by most people's uh, perspective. That's Final Fantasy VII and Tekken 3. Okay, so when they finally announced the 20 games, that was the nail in the coffin for me. Uh, Battle Arena Toshinden, Cool Borders 2, which actually I love Cool Borders 2. Um, I already own Battle Arena Toshinden. I own Destruction Derby. Not really into Final Fantasy 7, but I can. I know a lot of people are into that. Grand Theft Auto, um, which is okay, but I mean, you're going back to it now, it's pretty rough. Intelligent Cube, which is interesting, but you know, that's more like a hidden gem. That's not, you know, the average person in might not be excited for that. Jumping Flash, which to their credit is a really expensive game right now to get on disc, although you can get that on the PSN store, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Metal Gear Solid, of course, has to be on there. Mr. Driller? Why? Why Mr. Driller? Abe's Odyssey, okay. Rayman, all right. Resident Evil Director's Cut, you definitely needed a Resident Evil. Mind you, uh, there are better ones, and we'll talk about that as well in this video. Revelations Persona, that was kind of a left field addition to this. Uh, R4 Ridge Racer Type 4, a lot of people do like, so I'll give them a pass on that. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, 
not the best Street Fighter entry. Um, you know, not the best uh, entry in that franchise. I I feel like out of all of the many different Street Fighter games, they put Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Okay, Siphon Filter. You know, it's a it's janky, but it's a classic. Tekken 3 has to be on there. Rainbow Six. Why? Everybody played that on PC. Why Why would you have that here on the PlayStation 1 Classic? Okay. Twisted Metal 1. Twisted Metal 1. Okay. And Wild Arms. That's what you get with this Classic. So here's where it really goes left. Nine. Count them. Nine. Of those 20 games are PAL games. Which means they were released in Europe. They're the European versions. Why does that matter? Well, because their whole electrical system is completely different over there. Uh, they use 50 hertz um, in their games on the PS1. All the PS1 versions, all the EU versions of PS1 games are 50 hertz, which means they run slower. They run at a slower frame rate than the NTSC versions. And those games are Battle Arena Toshinden, a fighting game, one that you would want to, you know, to have the highest frame rate possible. Cool Borders 2, another one. It involves speed. Destruction Derby, you can argue for that one as well, although it's already kind of a chunky, clunky game. Grand Theft Auto, it, it runs clunky at 50 hertz. Why? Jumping Flash. There's a lot going on, on the screen. It would be better if it was smoother. Abe's Odyssey, okay, that's probably the only one that I'm like, all right, and maybe Resident Evil as well. Those two, I would probably say, okay, maybe I can give you a pass on that, but still, they're not the definitive versions of those games. Tekken 3, that has to be the biggest mistake. How could you put the 50 hertz version of Tekken 3? And, I mean, Rainbow Six shouldn't even be there, but they put the 50 hertz version of Rainbow Six. I mean, you could probably go on GOG and download Rainbow Six on your netbook or, you know, your toaster. And it'll run at 60 frames per second on the highest settings. Atrocious. And we still don't know. We still haven't heard from Sony as to why they decided that nine of these games had to be uh, PAL region. Especially now that Sony has admitted they tested a bunch of awesome games that people were expecting to see in the classic, including Tony Hawk, uh, including Crash, including Spyro. Many games uh, that people were expecting were not on the classic, but apparently were considered. And we don't know why these decisions were made. We can assume it was due to licensing, especially for games like Tony Hawk, that has a lot of licensed music. But I would assume they knew about this, right? I mean, why would you even test it if it has all this licensed music? I'm not sure. It's a big mystery. My assumption is that Sony, you know, shoveled this off to some smaller company to handle this. Maybe they constructed the case and then they had some, you know, some Chinese company or, or something like that with a low budget put together something on a low budget. It's a travesty. And really, it really messes up the PlayStation name, the Sony name. If you go on YouTube, you'll see there are a lot of videos, thousands possibly, about the PlayStation Classic. Many of my own favorite YouTubers have made several videos um, cashing in on the PlayStation Classic bashing. But there are a lot. And this is going to be another one to add to that pile since I haven't talked about it yet. But I think there's something that hasn't been discussed is that there is already a PlayStation Classic. There's a better PlayStation Classic. The PlayStation 3, my friendos. Not only can you play Blu-rays, not only can you play PS3 games, not only can you download PS2 games, but you can also download PlayStation 1 games. 
Uh, you can even download media files on your computer and stream them directly to your PS3, which I used to do all the time. And nowadays, you can get a PlayStation 3 used for the same price that you're paying for a PlayStation Classic. I mean, well, now that they have it on sale for 75 you know, maybe the argue, <laughs> you can argue against that a little bit. But just from a cursory glance here, you can see there are a ton of units available. I recommend the super slim version as some of the earlier versions, even the first uh, slim model, um, were prone to yellow light of death. But these consoles are wi widely available. These consoles are widely available. So now we're looking at the PlayStation Store, the PSN Store, and I'm just going to show you what there is available on the PlayStation Store if you want to play some PS1 games on your PS3. So granted, if you buy your PS3 for $100, it's probably not going to come with games. Maybe if you find the right deal, it will come with some games. Uh, maybe they'll leave some games for you on the hard drive. You never really know. When you buy things used, it's kind of a crapshoot and they stop producing new PS3s. So that's kind of the one downside, but it's not hard to find uh, you know, a, an affordable working used version of the PS3 at this point. I mean, it's only that was only last gen. I mean, you could still find PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 consoles that work just fine. Although there were a lot of more problems with the PS3, I can concede to that. But looking over here, look at this. Mega Man 2, 399. If you're a PS Plus member, which most people who have a PlayStation already are, it would have been it would be two ninety nine actually because I saw this uh, before and I was thinking about getting that because I already have Mega Man Legends as you'll see in this video. But check out all the other great games you can pick and choose. A lot uh, they used to have a lot more sales now they just sparingly have P sales on PS one games. But assuming that, let's say you pay full price, $6 for each game. Some games are, are 10 bucks, by the way. But I, haven't, I have not, to this day, spent more than 10 bucks for a PlayStation 1 game on the PSN store. Um, I probably have spent less on PS1 games on the PSN store than I would have spent buying the PlayStation Classic for $100. Okay, and it's mostly like the Square games that are ten bucks, but most of them are five ninety nine and do regularly go on sale. So if you did get twenty of these games at full price, let's say six dollars each, twenty games at six dollars is one hundred twenty dollars. And if you paid attention to the sales, you probably got could get twenty games for a hundred dollars or less. I recently purchased um, Legacy of Kane and Mega Man Legends for, a, no, it was Blood Omen and Soul Reaver for less than $2 each. I, I believe they were eighty something each with PS Plus. So let's get into it, gang. We're going to check out my PlayStation Classic and my 20 games of choice. Oddworld Abe's Exodus is a 2D puzzle platformer developed by Oddworld Inhabitants and published by GT Interactive in 1998. It's both a sequel to Abe's Odyssey and a spin-off not considered part of the Oddworld Quintology. While its predecessor is present on the PS1 Classic, it is unfortunately one of the nine PAL games included. Although in this case, I don't imagine a 50Hz refresh rate would be too detrimental to the fun factor. Abe's Exodus is almost exactly like the first Oddworld title, except with enhanced gameplay and quality of life features. Along with a greater variety of Mutocons, Abe's periled race of beings, the sequel gives you the added option to save anywhere at any time, a rarity in the PS1 days. The game's graphics are filled with rich detail and personality, while the gameplay utilizes clever mechanics to push you through each level. Blood Omen Legacy of Cain is a 2D top-down dungeon crawler developed by Silicon Knights and published by Crystal Dynamics in 1996. 
As the first game in the Legacy of Kane series, it is an important game that sets up a classic PlayStation franchise with rich lore. To this day, very few games explore vampire fiction, so this title easily stood out amongst other PlayStation titles. Many fans of the Legacy of Kane series still prefer the original over the more widely popular follow-up Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. While the gameplay is fairly simple at the beginning, you soon earn new physical forms to change into such as a werewolf or a swarm of bats. New weapons and armor also change things up as you progress. The excellent voice work is another highlight of what would become a signature trait of the series. Curious devices hurl bolts of whirling energy and eviscerate my human enemies by stripping ragged flesh from blood-stained bone. Bloody Roar 2 is a 3D fighter developed by Aiding and Rising and published by Sony in North America in 1998. It's a long-forgotten series. Bloody Roar 4, the final game in the series, released on the PlayStation 2 way back in 2003. So many young gamers have never heard of or even played any of these games. Obviously, Tekken 3 is a better 3D fighting choice for the PlayStation Classic, but not 50 Hertz Tekken 3. Each fighter has the ability to temporarily transform into an anthropomorphic creature, half man, half animal or insect. This offers a new moveset in addition to the standard moves and deals out more damage. Although it has some flaws, this game has at least aged graphically better than most PlayStation games and runs at a smooth 60 frames per second. Castlevania Symphony of the Night is an RPG platformer developed and published by Konami in 1997 for PlayStation. Many PlayStation fans were expecting this game to be on the PlayStation Classic, but speculate that Konami or Sony didn't want to cannibalize sales on the recent Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood remaster compilation. It's a challenging platformer with a deep upgrade system and engaging story. There are tons of different enemies to slay, and along with Super Metroid, Symphony helped to revolutionize platformers, paving the way for Metroidvania-style gems like Shadow Complex and Guacamelee. Chrono Trigger is a 2D, top-down, Japanese role-playing game developed and published by Square for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in 1995. By 1999, the game was ported over to the PlayStation by developer Tose. Tose? To Tose. T-O-S-E. Anyways, Chrono Trigger is famous for its character designs, which were created by Akira Toriyama, the legendary creator of the Dragon Ball series. While the DS port is widely considered the definitive version, Chrono Trigger on the PlayStation is still a great game, which is considered one of the best JRPGs of all time. The story of time travel and lost love is epic in nature, while the combat is simple yet fun and accessible. Although this is a SNES port, I personally feel this game has aged much better graphically than Final Fantasy VII, which is included in the PlayStation Classic. Dino Crisis 2 is an action game for the PlayStation developed and published by Capcom in the year 2000. While I much prefer the darker and moodier survival horror original, the sequel to 1999's Dino Crisis is still a good game, although for very different reasons. The original Dino Crisis was essentially a Resident Evil clone, but with raptors and T-Rexes instead of zombies and Mr. Rexes. Suspense and jump scares were key 
in a sequel, suspense is thrown out the window in favor of constant, and I mean constant, action. While the familiar exploration and story elements carry over with aspects of the deliciously pre-rendered backgrounds available for interaction, much of the game involves running and shooting your way frantically from point A to B to C. It'll definitely get your adrenaline pumping when you have groups of raptors rapidly spawning and ganging up on you within the game's many tight corridors. Fighting Force is a 3D beat-em-up developed by Core Design and published by Eidos in 1997. Although the game was not well received, it was still a memorable game from my own childhood. While the controls, movement, and camera are significantly janky, it's still a fun experience. Just like any beat-em-up, it's a game best played with another person, especially considering how difficult it is. You begin the game with zero continues and you really need to know what you're doing in order to earn more. What I love about this game are the different weapons such as the rocket launcher and the destructible features within the environment such as walls and cars. Fighting Force is also not lacking in personality with interesting character and level design. The PlayStation Classic unfortunately has zero beat-em-ups represented. Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver is a 3D action adventure developed by Crystal Dynamics and published by Eidos Interactive in 1999. One of the most outrageous omissions on the PlayStation Classic, Soul Reaver is simply one of the best PlayStation games of all time. From the excellent art style to the open-ended combat to the excellent voice work, Soul Reaver was a major achievement on the PlayStation. A sequel to Blood Omen, Soul Reaver follows Raziel, a vampire serving Kane's empire, who is cast into an abyss for reaching a new stage of vampire evolution before his master. It's an absolutely epic tale of revenge featuring a groundbreaking interdimensional shift mechanic. The voice acting is probably the best that the PlayStation has to offer across its 1500 plus games. The combat mechanics are also a standout, allowing you to dispatch a variety of vampires in a variety of ways. Medieval is a hack and slash action adventure developed by SCE Cambridge Studio and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation in 1998. Colorful and well animated, this title caters well to young and old gamers alike. As the hack and slash moniker implies, the combat is fairly simple and progression is mostly a cakewalk. The gameplay involves going from sector to sector, smacking up the undead with your sword or arm, while hunting down runes that unlock each new area. While Rayman, Jumping Flash, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, and Mr. Driller all appeal to younger audiences, I feel this game is more accessible than those, save for Rayman. Not to mention, Jumping Flash is unfortunately one of the PAL 9 on the classic. Mega Man Legends is an action-adventure shooter released by Capcom in 1997. A vastly popular spin-off of the even more popular Mega Man series, this marks yet another glaring omission on the PlayStation Classic. Also, this is another dormant franchise like Dino Crisis and Legacy of Kain that fans have been clamoring for for years to see either remastered or given new sequels. Mega Man Legends is a huge departure from its 2D platformer roots, with series firsts such as voiceovers, towns, extensive dialogue, and 3D graphics. It actually feels more like an action RPG than a shooter, thanks to the emphasis on story and character customization. However, this title isn't for everyone as the controls can be cumbersome without a right analog stick, a function that the PlayStation Classics controllers lack anyway. Metal Gear Solid is a stealth action adventure developed and published by Konami and released for the PlayStation in 1998. This classic title not only brought the Metal Gear franchise into the 3D space, but also became the foundation for all stealth games that would come after it. 
This title is only one of two PlayStation games on the list that are already on the PlayStation Classic. Revolutionary gameplay matched with a deep and satisfying geopolitical espionage narrative makes for a classic title revered till this day. While controlling Snake involves a steep learning curve, adjusting to it is all worth it in the end. The characters are iconic, the voice acting is superb, and the wealth of weapons and tools at your disposal mean you can tackle most scenarios in many different ways. When the other countries hear about this new weapon, they'll all want to contact us. Washington won't be very happy when we start selling their own system to the highest bidders. Yes. President will break. Metal Gear Solid VR Missions, originally the third disc in the Metal Gear Solid Integral Japanese exclusive release, was developed and published as a standalone game in North America by Konami in 1999. The game features all the same gameplay of the original, along with a special mode where you play as the Cyborg Ninja. This mode, unfortunately for some, must be unlocked just like the vast majority of the 300 total VR missions. The missions are very brief, which encourages players to replay them over and over to beat their best completion times. It can get addictive after a while, especially when you are treated to end after completing each scenario. Parasite Eve is an action RPG developed and published by Square in 1998. This was and continues to be a unique and memorable game that has aged well over the past 20 years. The battle system takes traditional JRPG turn-based mechanics and adds the ability to manage your position on the battlefield during combat. This title has a strong opening that sets up the narrative and immediately introduces you to the villain. As you progress throughout the game, you will earn new abilities, weapons, and armor. The hideous enemies, somber music, and moody pre-rendered graphics make you feel like it's from a certain survival horror franchise. Parasite Eve 2 is an action survival horror title developed and published by Square in 2000. A sequel to Parasite Eve, this continues the storyline several years after the events of the first game. A lot has changed as this game plays quite differently. While battle is still restricted to RPG-like instances, Aya controls more like Claire Redfield than her former self. Also, the frequency of conflicts has increased, with enemies waiting for you in just about every room and less time dedicated to story. The slew of new weapons helps with overlooking some of these flaws, but one can't help but wonder how great a sequel more loyal to the original might have been. Speaking of Claire Redfield, Resident Evil 2 is a survival horror title developed and published by Capcom in 1998. Sony was right to include a Resident Evil title in the PlayStation Classic, but they didn't include the best one. Two versions of two separate campaigns that all intertwined to form my favorite Resident Evil game of all time. The locales, the enemies, the weapons, the bosses are some of the finest vintage gaming you can get. While people complain about the tank controls, I embrace them. They add tension and suspense. I don't mind backtracking either. Look at those lush pre-rendered backgrounds. How can you not love every single second of this? Welcome back. Hey, take it easy. We're inside Umbrella's secret lab. I'll go find something to treat that wound, so just rest here in the meantime. Silent Hill is a survival horror title developed and published by Konami in 1999. The atmosphere, both metaphorical and literal, is the focus of Silent Hill. A dense fog permeates the town, while a smattering of different creepy creatures lurk about. Story is conveyed through text and cutscenes using both CG and in-game graphics. Combat is a bit clunky, but that is part of the appeal in a PS1 hard title. Akira Yamaoka's soundtrack carries a lot of the weight in terms of atmosphere. Different tracks are queued up to gameplay which immerse you in this tense environment. And the radio mechanic does a good job of pumping up your adrenaline for a fight as well.
Siphon Filter is a third-person action-adventure title developed by Aedetic? A... Aedetic? A... Aedetic? 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 And published by 989 Studios in 1999. This is the second and last game on this list that is already on the PlayStation Classic. It hasn't aged all that well, but Siphon Filter still holds a special place in my heart. The place in my heart that yearns to taste people till they burn. You get a lot of cool weapons, although only a few seem practical in most situations. A lot of effort is put towards story, with competent voice acting and cutscenes. They are coming. Go, torch it. Burn it all. But what about the serum? Leave nothing. Now I will show you how I deal with informants. Finish him. With pleasure. These are the coordinates Ellis sent. Over there. Twisted Metal 2 was developed by Singletrack and published by Sony in 1996. The sequel to the 1995 original is probably still the most popular and most played entry of the series to this day. This is the game we all remember playing. Sony's decision to include the first Twisted Metal instead of the second gives even more credence to the idea that they are planning a second PlayStation Classic. With more vehicles and weapons, more massive stages, Twisted Metal 2 should have been the obvious choice. Vagrant Story is an action RPG developed and published by Square in 2000. It's set in a medieval style world with knights and princes, except these guys dress in assless chaps. The combat system is reminiscent of Parasite Eve's system, although this one is more advanced in that you can target different limbs. Granted, I haven't played enough to see the real benefits of targeting limbs. For example, I tried to knock out an enemy's sword by targeting his arm, but that never happened. The narrative is well developed and interwoven between the action. The development team took this game very seriously and they are all about getting you invested from the beginning. The PlayStation 1, it's such a classic console. It has something for everyone. It has tons of great games, tons of memorable games for just about uh, any and every genre that you're into. Um, you know, we talked about some of the games that could have or should have been on the PlayStation 1 Classic. Um, I showed you the ones I have on PSN that I play on PS3 um, that I could also play on Vita or, P or PSP if I wanted to, I guess, right? Because you can do that on on those handhelds as well with the same um, with the link with the with the um, the what should I call it the uh, share play. Uh, here's some of the physical PS1 games that I have. Um, you know, uh, I have a ton more that I owned as a kid, but sold over time so that I can get uh, my PS2 and PS2 games. Um, I'll probably do a video about some of the uh, hidden gems that I have on PS1. You know, I've got some regular jewel case uh, versions. I've got a couple of, um, you know, the long boxes that I started collecting. Uh, that are collecting there. I got to Toshinden up there. So slowly uh, rebuilding that PlayStation 1 collection. Still a couple games that I, I'd like to pick up physically so that I, I can enjoy them. 
uh, you know, whenever I want, and that you know they'll 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 hold some value. Uh, you know, eventually the PSN store is gonna close down for PS3. We all know that. Eventually, it'll, it'll close down, just like the Wii Shop, the Wii U Shop. Um, you know, it's just it's just how things work. You know, nothing lasts forever, especially digital uh, stuff. You never know you know what'll happen when the li the license expires the rights expire ex et cetera et cetera um and another thing is that if you pop in the PlayStation disc into the PS3 by the way the PlayStation 3 does play PlayStation 1 disc most people well a lot of people don't know that um but also what even fewer people know is that Playing PlayStation 1 games physically on your PlayStation 3, popping the disc in, a lot of times it looks even better than what you download off of the PSN store, which is emulated. Um, and granted, uh, it's still emulated when you pop the disc in, but for whatever reason, some games look better on disc. There's also some games that look better off the PSN store. So it's just up to you to do that research as a responsible consumer and just enjoy your games. Uh, I love the PlayStation 1. I still remember vividly to this day picking it up, popping in the, the demo disc, playing the heck out of that, playing Triple Play 98, which I also need to get again because I put more hours in that game than most games I've ever played. Thousands and thousands of hours, hundreds of seasons, crazy stuff. But, yep, PlayStation 1, one of the best consoles of all time and Sony really messed up by not doing it justice by not memorializing it the way they should have so did you enjoy the video give me a like give me a sub head over to my Twitter follow me there head over to my twitch follow me there too join in join the fam enjoy the content ah! so did you like the video did you oh shoot the brightness